From the first wooden warships equipped with cannons and powered by heavy white sails to the modern-day aircraft carrier capable of firing nuclear shells, the American Navy has become one of the most powerful forces on the planet. From 1776 to the present day, American warships have gone through 240 years of evolution, becoming an impressive symbol of what humans can accomplish. The Revolutionary War was the key to freedom for America, and the Continental Congress knew that something had to be done to stop the British from winning. Since the British had to come by ship, either by sea or on the Great Lakes from British Canada, it made sense that they should organize a navy, but building ships took time and money. The initial goal of the U.S. Navy was to intercept British ships that were bringing supplies and troops to America. Several plans were drafted in 1775 for 13 galleys to be made. They would be compromised of 32, 28, and 24 gunships, gun meaning primitive cannons. One of the 32 gunships, the USS Raleigh, captained by John Barry, was fairly successful to begin with, but was captured by the British and enlisted in the Royal Navy. Congress became desperate and began writing letters of mark for pirates in the Caribbean. This would allow pirates to become privateers for the Navy and take down British ships without having to worry about being attacked by American ones. An estimated 1,700 letters were signed. As time passed, ships evolved into bigger, faster, and more aggressive vessels. George Washington became the first president of America, and as the new nation emerged in the world, Washington thought that the country needed a navy to defend its maritime interests. In 1794, six ships were authorized for construction. One of the most revered was the USS Constitution. The War of 1812 was a breakthrough for America, as it finally established its power in the world. The USS Constitution, captained by Isaac Hull, played a big role in victories made by the U.S. She was engaged in a rather famous conflict with the British Guerriere in which both ships fought until the Guerriere was beat. At one point, a shot fired from the British vessel bounced off the side of the USS Constitution, giving her the nickname Old Ironsides. The USS Constitution was made of wood, but the idea of a ship having iron sides was soon to become a reality. The steamboat was developed during the Industrial Revolution by Robert Fulton and was first applied to battleships on the USS Princeton. This was brought about by a partnership between John Erickson, a Swedish-American inventor, and Captain Robert Stockton. Erickson also played a large part in developing the first ironclad, or armored ship, the USS Monitor. She had been designed and started prior to the Civil War, but was first launched on January 30th, 1862, one year into the war. Another ironclad made around the same time was the USS Merrimack, and when the war started she was renamed the CSS Virginia and served the Confederacy. Technically the first ironclad was the Fr French glory, but the Monitor and Merrimack were more developed. The CSS Virginia was the terror of the seas for many wooden Union ships, as she was virtually indestructible and armed with high explosive shells. On March 8, 1862, the U.S. Monitor faced the Virginia at Hampton Roads near Virginia. The Battle of Hampton Roads marked the very first fight between ironclads and today is still regarded as one of the most historic battles between warships. Eventually, the CSS Virginia's shell cracked and she retreated on March 9th. The ironclad's successor was the Pre-Dreadnought, a ship made completely of steel with impressive guns and a triple expansion steam engine. These were named later due to the revolutionary dreadnoughts that followed. The dreadnought era was a period that is also known as the Age of the Battleship. It started in 1906 when the Royal Navy launched the HMS Dreadnought. This massive tanker was the biggest and most lethal ship on the seas with an all-big gun armament scheme and a steam turbine propulsion. It became clear to many nations that the battleship was evolving and compared to the dreadnought their ships were terribly outdated. America emerged with the USS Texas, a super dreadnought and the only one still around today. These dreadnoughts were used throughout World War I and torpedoes were developed towards the end of the conflict. After World War I, the Washington Naval Treaty of 1922 was held to limit the number of warships a country could hold. This sparked the first and second Geneva Naval Conventions and the London Naval Treaties. However, at the start of World War II, these policies were ignored. 
In the 1920s, U.S. General Billy Mitchell began spreading the idea that air forces could be far more efficient than battleships. Several bomb tests on old U.S. battleships proved him correct, and more construction efforts were focused on planes instead of ships. Throughout the course of World War II, America became aware that the battleship was no longer the most important piece of equipment. They no longer dominated the world. Planes and weapons of mass destruction, such as bombs, were more effective. Thus, the age of the battleship was over and the age of the aircraft carrier had begun. These enormous ships were capable of carrying planes and weapons. They were floating military bases. World War II revealed a lot of new and important technologies designed for battle. Torpedoes, which had been designed at the end of World War I, were being used to bomb aircraft carriers and German submarines. Radar was developed and applied to many battleships, the first being the USS Leary, and nuclear weapons were created and used on Japan. Arguably the most important development during the World War II was the use of radar on ships. German submarines were abundant and dangerous. Radar could detect these easily, and in the future, it would be used to map the ocean floor and discover the mid-ocean ridges. One of the most memorable battles of World War II for America was the Pearl Harbor bombing. On December 7, 1941, the Japanese launched a full-out attack on the U.S. naval base, sinking five U.S. battleships and causing heavy damage to many others. The Battle of Midway was a feat in strategy and weapons for the U.S. Navy. They outsmarted the Japanese in their attempts to surprise America and won the battle just weeks after having many of their ships attacked at Pearl Harbor. Eventually, Japan surrendered to the United States and signed the Japanese Instrument of Surrender aboard the USS Missouri on September 2, 1945. The atom bombs used on Japan were not forgotten, and when the Cold War began, nuclear missiles were the most sought-after weapons. Many retired American warships were sunk as test subjects for nuclear missiles. Soon, the Iowa-class ship was released and designed to carry Tomahawk missiles. Today, the U.S. Navy has the most nuclear-powered submarines as well as aircraft carriers in the world with 71 active nuclear-powered subs and 19 commissioned aircraft carriers. Most navies only have a couple, if any. Throughout history, the U.S. Navy has grown into one of the most powerful forces on Earth. It has evolved through times of peace and war to produce not only ships, but weapons of destruction and technologies far more advanced than people dreamed it would be. Today's battleship now dominates the seas and is a spectacle of pure titanic proportions and brute strength.